Nintendo's Amiibo figures look great as they are, but customizing is a way of making them even more special. I'm TJ, and it's my mission to make the map that removes the mystery from Amiibo to help you chart the course to conquer your favorite custom challenges and achieve the unique and personalized Amiibo you always wanted. Let me make the mistake so you don't have to. Adventure time! I'm bored already! That's me, TJ, and Dark TJ. They'll be popping up from time to time to offer some tips, tricks, and helpful hints. Don't listen to anything this guy has to say. He has no idea what he's doing. Or not so helpful. It's dangerous to go alone, so come with us and we'll conquer this custom together. Welcome to Custom Conquest. Hey everybody, we're back at it again, and I'm really glad you decided to join us. This time, for the third installment of our Koopaling miniseries, we're going to focus on Wendy Koopa. Oh right, Cootie Pie! Hey, she ain't gone by that nickname since the cartoon days. <laughs> That's right. Now, in addition to being the only girl, Wendy also has a bunch of unique aspects in terms of just the custom construction, so we're going to really focus on those aspects today. Let's get right into it. When I first looked at Wendy Koopa, I gotta say out of all the Koopalings, she was the one I was the most intimidated by. But when it came to actually executing it, the time and level of difficulty is somewhat comparable to the rest of the Koopalings. So I'm gonna rate her a 9. She is, after all, like the rest of them, a complete redesign from top to bottom. She definitely took a little patience and practice. Alright, so let's do a quick rundown of the components and equipment, starting with the figures, pieces, and parts. Obviously, we're going to start out with the Bowser Jr. Amiibo, the figure is going to serve as our base, and all of the data is going to be stored to his NFC chip. Next, and unique to Wendy, I use these interlocking rings, and you're going to want two of them. The ones I used happen to be aluminum. Next up, we have our trusty thumbtacks and paper clips. These play the same role as you've seen in all the previous videos, to build an armature that we can sculpt on top of, and to add a little bit of extra structure and support. Making their triumphant return appearance, the plastic spork. While Wendy doesn't have any teeth, I'm still going to use the spork to build the reverse of her shell. And finally, we have those custom vinyl stickers out of all of the Koopalings Wendy's eyes have the most detail, and I don't mind telling you I was really glad to not have to paint it. Over on the equipment side, let's take a look at what tools and supplies we used. We've rounded up all the usual suspects, starting with our round nose pliers, and it definitely won't kill you to have a couple extra. As per usual, we're going to bring all these pieces together with some sculpting putty. In the case of Wendy Koopa, I used both Milliput and Sculpey. Couldn't imagine surviving this process without some super glue. For the Koopalings, I've been using Loctite, and let me tell you, it certainly lives up to the name. Since this is a complete repaint from top to bottom, we're going to need some paint and brushes, along with some primer and spray paint. And finally, get your hands on a reliable cutter and some sandpaper. I use an X-Acto knife, and a medium-grade sandpaper works for most of my needs, although I do frequently resort to nail files. Now let's figure out how we're going to do this thing. Let's start the course for putting this thing together. Starting with the head, Wendy Koopa doesn't have any hair, so we're going to lose the ponytail and shave down the horns and eyebrows. Those beady little black eyes are going to have to go, but I'm concerned that the top of his head is going to be a little bit short and sloped for the size of Wendy's eyes, so we may have to build up on it. For the mouth area, I really don't want to build up on it at all. My concern is making your mouth look too puffy. While she does have somewhat of a pouty mouth area, I think that's a very easy thing to overdo. I can tell Bowser Jr.'s nose is a little bit too long, so I'm gonna shave it as far back as I can and still preserve the nostril holes. Wendy doesn't have any indentation for her mouth like the other Koopalings do, so I'm gonna have to fill in any area that remains after I sand it down. And I'm pretty sure that the lips and her bow are gonna have to be sculpted. For the body, Wendy is completely upright, so we're definitely gonna have to change the angle of the body, and her abdominal section is completely exposed, so that's gonna have to be built. But we've done that before, so I'm pretty confident we can handle it again. Now let's take a look at the arms. Wendy's right arm is in pretty much the same position as Bowser Jr.'s, and the hand is clenched into a fist, so that's all good. But it looks like the hand's going to have to be rotated the other way, and the arm's going to have to be pivoted at the shoulder to face down. That would all be really easy if it wasn't for the fact that Wendy is the only one of the Koopalings that does not wear wrist bracers. Instead, she has these really oversized ring bracelets. Adding the bracelets is going to be no problem, but we are going to have to remove Bowser Jr.'s. So it'll probably just be a matter of trimming down and then sanding smooth. The left arm is a little bit trickier because Bowser Jr.'s is bent at a right angle and Wendy's is completely extended. The hand is open, so I'm pretty sure we can use that hand. We're going to have to remove the cuff, just like before, and I'm going to guess sculpting that arm is going to be the easiest way to go. The only other detail of the body we have to deal with is her necklace. It's just a series of small red round balls. I'm sure we could roll a few of those out if we needed to. Personally, I'd much rather find something, but either way, we know that's something we're gonna have to add on. Here we go, another clown car conversation. So on the clown car front, while we are gonna make the specific modifications to suit Wendy, the process is gonna be exactly the same as what you've seen twice so far, only we're gonna adjust it to match the angle and color specific to Wendy. Now let's conquer this custom.
While Bowser Jr. provides pretty much everything we need, we're gonna have to take him completely apart, so let's drop this little guy into the boiling water. I like to leave him in there for at least 30 seconds, usually closer to a minute or a minute and a half. Sometimes the glue is really stubborn, and in that case, the best thing to do is just to put him back in there again. Don't worry about your NFC chip, it will be just fine. We're gonna take this guy totally apart, and we'll set the clown car off to the side so that we can focus on Wendy for now. Out of all the Kooplings, I actually think Wendy's the best match for Bowser Jr., and we're gonna use every piece of him. Except for the bib. Yeah, Wendy ain't no baby. If you really want to make these customs but are too intimidated by the process of a complete reposing, remember, you can achieve some great results by just modifying the head and then doing a repaint job. So let's deal with the head first. Let's pop off Bowser Jr.'s ponytail. We'll shave off his spikes, eyebrows, and eyes. And that's going to clear up the top of the head so we've got a nice smooth area to work with. I was hoping we could just leave it as it is, but that wound up not being the case because there isn't enough real estate for the scale of Wendy's eyes. So let's build up on that with some Milliput. As I mentioned in the last section, I really want to avoid the temptation of building outwardly with Wendy's lips because while they are pretty pouty, I'm concerned about making them too puffy looking. So I'm going to start by shaving away as much as I can without disrupting the position of the nostrils. If you look at the profile of the trophy, Wendy's a lot more snub-nosed than Bowser Jr. So I want to shorten that up as much as I can. I can shave away most of the mouth area, but there are going to be some small gaps at the corner, which is easy enough to fill in with some Milliput. Just have some water on hand, use your fingers. You should be able to smooth it out without any issues. And even if you're not happy with it, you can always sand it down after it sets. I also used Milliput to make Wendy's lips. You can build it directly onto the mouth area if you want to. I started out by making an oval and then using the back of my exact knife to form the separation. The only other aspect of Wendy's head that we need to create a solution for is the bow. Now, I don't know why, but I really did not want to sculpt this. I, actually, I sort of know why. It's because I really hate sculpting things that need to be perfectly symmetrical. So I wound up doing it like four or five times. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not a particularly difficult shape, but it was really important to me that the scale was exactly right, it was really smooth, and very symmetrical. So after numerous, let's call them practice attempts, the one I finally used is made out of Sculpey. And the technique I used to create the one that I like the best involved making one small circle, two medium circles, circles, and two larger ovals. In order to proportion each side correctly, I cut my sculpting material in half, and then made the same shape so that once I put them together, I felt like they had the correct balance to it. And then I made the same shape with each side. Even though I'm sure you could sculpt each half of the bow as a solid piece, I found this method got me closer to how I wanted it to look. Then I just stuck all five pieces together and used my finger and a toothpick to smooth them together. If you use Milliput, it'll set on its own, but since I use Sculpey, I have to go into the oven. 275 degrees for 15 minutes. Now that's what I call an amiibo. Get it? Me bow. Ha ha, I'm hilarious. When I was brainstorming ways to get out of making the bow, I thought about what other figures there are in a similar scale that might already have a bow intact. The first thing I thought of was Celeste from the Animal Crossing series. But upon close inspection, that bow has some really great texture detail that, while it looks great on Celeste, I feel like Wendy's bow should be pretty smooth, not to mention the shape isn't exactly right. The next thing that came to mind was not actually an amiibo, but rather a figure from another line of Toys to Life figures, Minnie Mouse from Disney Infinity. She has a bow that's about the right scale. It even has polka dots! And the more I thought about it, the more I felt I might even be able to use Minnie Mouse as the base. Remove the ears and the tip of the nose, and I still feel like that might have worked. But I bring it up because while I didn't use any of it, you might want to. When you're customizing, you can't always look at things for what they are, but rather for what they could be. So don't be shy about taking your creativity off the leash. Since we have to make Wendy stand up right and reposition the arms anyway, we can start by just cutting the arms right off. I'm gonna cut the closed fist off the right arm, and I'm also gonna shave off the cuff with my X-Acto knife. Then you can sand it smooth. For the left arm, I'm gonna use the hand, but there's really not much that can be salvaged from Bowser Jr.'s arm. So let's sculpt this thing. For a while, I had the idea that I wanted to use this old Burger King creepy classic Lisa Simpson figure for Wendy Koopa's body because the arms are in pretty much the same position and the scale's about right. I even went so far as to attempt putting it together, but ultimately I came to the decision that the necklace beads are too small, fingers aren't really well enough to find, and the amount of work that it would take to get this to where I needed it to be just wasn't worth the effort, so I scrapped that idea. To bring all these body pieces together, I'm going to poke some holes using a thumbtack and plug them up with paper clips to form the skeleton for the arms. I'm going to poke a hole at the shoulder and connect it to the body, and then I'm going to poke another hole at the wrist, fill it with a paper clip, and connect the hand. On the left side, I'm going to trim a paper clip to the length that I want Wendy's arm to be, and cork the end of it with her hand. Now at this point, I'm gonna fill in any gaps with Milliput, connect the shell, and sculpt the left arm. While you could certainly build directly onto the paperclip, I recommend just making a simple log and then pushing it right on. You might be surprised by how minimal the damage is, and it'll be really easy to smooth back out. Remember to have your water and toothpicks on hand, and just make it as smooth as you can. Once the body sets, we've gotta deal with the reverse of Wendy's shell. Enter the spork. So using a scissor, I'm gonna cut out the centermost portion of the spork, where the curve is the most subtle. I didn't do any real measuring, I just eyeballed balled it and cut it a little oversized so that I had some room to scale down, and then used the X-Acto knife to add some scores where I wanted there to be segmentation. Don't cut it all the way through, just depress it enough to leave a little bit of a groove. Then when you fold the spoon, it'll 
accentuate the separation without actually separating it. And then as a final touch, I'm gonna use a really small pair of scissors to take a little nick out of the sides. I tested it against the body I sculpted to make sure that it was the size I wanted it to be. Now let's get this gal painted up. I started out by using a gray primer. Yep, that one right there. Followed up by some yellow spray paint, which I really can't say enough about. It gave me a really smooth finish and it was really easy to paint onto. Then your paints! As you've probably noticed, Wendy's the only one of the Kooplings whose head is the same color as her body, so that's already covered. I used a weak color for the mouth and also for the abdominal section of the shell. I painted the spikes with a flesh tone, I traced the outer rim of the shell with some white, and the rings around them with a gray. I mixed up a shade of pink for the shell and the lips. Even though I sculpted Wendy's bow out of pink Sculpey, because I spent a lot of time sanding it, it wasn't particularly smooth, so I painted it pink anyway. The entire time I was working on these Kooplings, I had Smash Brothers open so I could constantly reference the 3D trophy models, which was super helpful. Even though I'm sure you could just slap these polka dots anywhere, I did the best I could to try to recreate the position that they are on the Smash Brothers trophy. Sheesh, obsessive much? For Wendy's bracelets, I knew exactly what I wanted to use right away. I'm sure you guys don't know this about me, but for my job, I'm a sword fighter and fight coordinator for film, television, new media, and live events. So I have occasion to wear chainmail a lot more than people probably do in most professions, and I knew right away the size and shape would be exactly right. So in my case, I just popped a couple aluminum links off the bottom of my chainmail hood. But these types of interlocking rings are really cheap and available all over the place. If you can't find them at your local hardware store, I'm sure you can pick them up online. Mine were silver, so the first thing I did was spray paint them gold. The advantage of aluminum is that it's an extremely soft metal, so it allows you to bend it very easily with your bare hands, a ring of any other material will work just fine. You can certainly use steel, or even rubber for that matter. But chances are, if you do use steel, you're going to have to do all this work with pliers. I will say, however, you're going to probably find much better results by pushing it forward or back, as opposed to spreading it wider. Because while getting it on is no problem, it's much easier to achieve a tight fit if all you have to do is push it back into place. It's going to be really hard to eliminate that gap if you don't have any room to push beyond where you want it to be. See what I mean? After I get those bracelets into position, I'm just going to hit them with a small dab of super glue to set them into place. Now Necklace drama! The necklace was one of the last details that I did for Wendy, and I really did not want to sculpt it. As I already mentioned before, I don't really enjoy sculpting objects that have to be perfectly identical. But I did sculpt them out of some red Sculpey. I baked them and everything, and they were all good enough. But when I was walking through my local craft store, I saw this $5 stone necklace that looked exactly right. The scale was right, color was great, and maybe proportional to the price of the amiibo, that's a little steep. But this was really late in the cupoling construction process, and at this point, I was really happy to save myself any kind of time that I could. I'm extremely satisfied with the look of them, but I will say they were really hard to work with because super glue has virtually zero effect on them. No matter what I did, I could not get them to respond to the super glue at all. They're on a clear piece of fishing line, which does stick to super glue, but because the piece is so small, getting it to set was really kind of a challenge, and it did take a number of attempts. Beads be rolling all over the floor. Yeah, that did happen quite a bit. So this is the necklace I used. I picked it up from Hobby Lobby. You're welcome to try to track it down, but you know, it's a circle. You could sculpt it without too much trouble, or I'm sure there's a lot of other bead options out there. And the final detail for our Wendy figure is our custom vinyl sticker for the eyes. I drew them in Adobe Illustrator and then printed them out on a custom vinyl bumper sticker. Because of the eyelashes and the eyebrow, there's a lot of really tough angles on Wendy's sticker, and I did wreck it on my first attempt, but I did include more more than one, because I figured that might happen, and eventually we got it on there. Clown car lightning round time! All right, this is potentially the third clown car you've seen me put together. We covered this a lot more extensively in the first episode of the Koopaling miniseries, featuring Larry Koopa. So here's a quick montage of Wendy's custom clown car. Montage! When it came time to set Wendy into the car, while she did fit into the original hole from Bowser Jr., she was pretty off-center, and I didn't like that, so I cut off Bowser Jr.'s support and filled in the hole in the clown car. As far as figure construction was concerned, I considered the Koopaling case closed, but as recent as just a couple days ago, I went in and made some minor tweaks. It's been said, and I'm gonna paraphrase a little bit, art is never finished, only abandoned. You don't want to spend a lifetime tinkering around on a project, but because there's really no standard unit of measurement for an art project to determine when something is in fact done, it's based purely on your own satisfaction. Or if you live in the real world, deadlines. <laughs> yeah, there's that too. With Wendy, I felt her eyes were a little bit too tall, so I carefully pulled them off of the tweezer, trimmed down the bottom, and I'm happy to say they were really easy to shift down on the face, there wasn't any unfortunate residue, and I like it a little bit better this way, so I'll consider that a second effort success. And with that, Wendy Koopa joins the battle. Now we've got our Wendy Koopa figure, let's see what she looks like in the box. If this box art is something that would be helpful for you, feel free to download it from a link in the description. I'm also going to include a link for the pre-measured and scaled Koopaling eyes that I used for the vinyl stickers. So you can find that down there as well. Guys, I love seeing all the custom Amiibo pictures you send me, so let's take a look at the most recent batch. 
If you want your art featured here on Custom Conquest, tweet me your pics at Custom Conquest and be sure to include the hashtag MyCCAmiibo. Or you can email me at CustomConquest at gmail.com. Well, I'm excited to have another Koopaling added to the roster, and I hope some of you at home take up the challenge. That's it for this episode. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Thanks for, for playing. playing. Dark Side out. Shiny Red Gyarados is the greatest Pokemon of all time. There, it had to be said.